Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Let's get underway with uh, just a brief market analysis. Currently, we've got uh, market conditions in bearish in a bull market. We've been pulling back in this overall uptrend. Just recall that our overall approach is focusing on long-term trend first. What direction is the market going? It's going higher. We are also kind of topping out or up in the upper end of this range right here. So right next to some resistance and pardon me, I'm dealing with a little bit of a pullback right here and not, not entirely unexpected as we've talked about markets just don't go straight up. Uh, it's due for some kind of a pause right here and, and is currently working through that. We have seen momentum shift significantly to the downside and so now we're solidly inside of this bearish range. Not quite extreme yet. If we see some acceleration and can some continuation to that downside, we will certainly want to keep an eye on that. The, the, the more support we start to break down right here, then the harder it's going to be for us to move back up uh, and continue this overall rally. That, that momentum range is now sitting, we're not very far back from that extreme range, we're right here. So if we see some, you know, another day or two or three of acceleration lower, we'll probably hit that and then be looking for at least a, a counter trend bounce, if not a support level bounce. And breadth also working its way towards the downside, uh, kind of stuck in that uh, trending zone. Sentiment also is at the high range sentiment. We're not, we just don't have any uh, fear quite yet. Still some complacency in the overall market. We just haven't seen a lot of capitulation type thing or, or uh, aggressive put buy and things like that. So uh, sentiment is still relatively calm. That does set, set itself up for potential downside. Bottoms typically happen when sentiment Significant bottoms usually happen when sentiment is is really negative, really fearful. And so we switch from complacency on the high end of the trend to fear on the bottom end of a trend. I typically haven't seen this though in shorter term correct, corrections, just, just retracements of an overall uptrend. Usually major market bottoms, we'll see those like we saw last October. Uh, but uh, as a, if this is just a pullback within an overall uptrend, we may not see that sentiment get much worse than that. Our buy sell ratio is um, is uh, is is getting pretty extreme right here. Uh, I mentioned this morning on my update that we had this range, which has been a relatively tight range, is is being broken out. This is this was a, a little bit more of a traditional type of range in terms of volatility. This was a this was towards the end of that bear market though, this is a one year chart. So we're going back from August and uh, really, you know, the bottom ended up being um, right around here in October. And then this bottom that we had in February. So when we get these really extreme wide ranges that become unsustainable, that's what we're looking for, for a significant turn is we're looking for these ranges to be un unsustainably um, unsustainably strong. Now, typically look what happens here is we get this first move off of the crossover, first move off of the crossover. Um, it doesn't always happen. You know, sometimes you get a little sloppiness in there as well, but even here, this first move after the crossover and then a peak, okay? So, and then a secondary peak. So this is where we're at right here. So as of this current trend, more than likely this is just the beginning of a of more more downside to come because we need a three part move. Okay, it, it almost never does it in one part. It typically will will unfold under a couple of different parts. And a lot of times this creates um, a, a new market low or significant market low because we get that capitulation. There's nobody there's there's no nobody left to sell or there's no more stocks to be turning over to a downtrend. So we'll watch to see if this is accelerating because we have this. Uh, this range that we've now broken through that hasn't happened uh, for quite some time. So pretty, pretty decent sell off right here. And so we've got a reversal happening. Hang on one second here. Okay. And um, that is the buy sell ratio. So we've got uh, sentiment also which is corresponding to the other sentiment chart, but let's look at it on this perspective. It's a little bit cleaner. And uh, these ranges down here. So down here in these ranges, uh, we'll, I, I believe we're gonna get there. Whether we get another push back up and then one more move lower, this, this momentum is just starting to accelerate. And there's starting to become a little bit of fear, at least fear of talking points with China slowing down, uh, maybe some bank or credit type issues happening in the economy as well. 
uh, recession with the inverted yield curve. We talked about that, about that last week. This this is not going to end well. At least it's not going to end now. This has got to be unwound somehow. And so the market, uh, in order for that to happen, the CPI numbers, inflation, all, everything just needs to come back down. So the Fed, we talked about. I think last week we talked about, or on Tuesday we talked about the bond market uh, with some acceleration to the downside as well. If we take a look at that, if we look at um, index, we go to market ETFs, and we look at the uh, the TLT, which is the 20-year bond. You can see here just this acceleration to the downside, even on the one-year chart. Um, pretty significant downside. We're approaching an extreme red across the board and the fact, and, and there's a support area coming up here on the bottom of bonds right here. So again, for whatever reason, bond, the bond market is, is collapsing, which is interest rates are rising. So the Fed, um, I believe there's some Fed stuff coming up uh, soon. I don't really pay too close of attention to that. I pay just because it's, it's usually, it's usually, you know, noise anyway. The bond market is telling us the story right here, and that is that interest rates are going to stay high. They're going to stay where they're at, or go even higher right here, based on what the bond market is doing. So we'll see if the if equities correspond to that. It can't it can't be good. Okay, none of these scenarios are good, at least in the shorter term for equities. Equities have kind of run their potentially run their course to the upside. And maybe one more pullback and then one more push higher. But these are these are becoming some pretty significant headwinds that we want to be uh, paying attention to now um, on TLT. So uh, those are those are kind of the key points in terms of markets. If we look at if we look at uh, uh, sectors, we can pull in some of these commodities and see if there's anything that's happening that's interesting here. My internet connection is a little bit slow. Hopefully that doesn't affect my audio. Sometimes that does that there. But if we do it just a year-to-date scan, you can see natural gas, uh, some of these others not so concerned about palladium, wheat, corn, uh, physical uh, platinum, silver, more more so the food, food, food and energy. So oil has actually been rallying, steel's been rallying, uh, wheat and corn have been uh, have been dropping, natural gas has been dropping significantly here as well. Um, and so in terms of what prices are doing in some of those other worlds, commodities, then we're, we're definitely seeing some of those pricing come back down. But there, there's some headwinds here in the market that we just have to be aware of, our retracement. So one of the things that I want to focus on that you may or may not be real familiar with or comfortable with, and that is utilizing this Fibonacci snap tool right here, which essentially, if you put this on your charts, it will connect to the highest and lowest point on the chart. I like to use the six month time frame, So it automatically will drag to that time frame. So if I were to pull up this chart and I were to look at this on a six month time frame, and it automatically is snapping to this high and this low, then I, then I immediately know based on this window, what the trend is. Okay, this the fact that this is connecting these two high points and low points tells me that the trend direction is down. Now this is not a trend line, it's just simply connecting the two points and it's just down in this case. What it is doing then is it's drawing these different levels of resistance. These are going to be resistance areas as the market, in this case UNG, which is natural gas, tries to climb back up this direction, it's going to hit a wall. Notice where that uh, that wall actually was here. You can see that this, it's, it's always fascinating to me that these Fibonacci ratios line up uh, almost identically to with, with where they need to be. You've got a price point that's right here where it was historically. Okay, so this the, these work really, really well for support resistance and zones and ranges. This range right here, this less than 236 is a momentum zone. So when we're inside of that zone, we're really getting the acceleration. Think back to that TLT chart we looked at, and I'll just pull that back in. When we're inside of this, on the downtrend, it's here. On the uptrend, it's on the upside, and we'll talk about that. But this is the momentum zone, and typically that's accelerating to the downside. Once we're in a really strong trend and we're, we have momentum, it's going to it's going to continue to rat to stay inside of this zone to the downside, maybe counter trend up, hit that, and then move uh, move lower. 
Once we get up above that, then it becomes a retracement or a counter trend zone. So we, we ultimately made it back up to this 50% zone and then it reversed back down again. So now it's probably gonna chop inside of this zone and then watch to see if we break that back down again, back down to that momentum location. That's, uh, that's a pretty common retracement type process, but this is an easy, visually, an easy way visually to say, ah, I'm not even gonna touch that thing. I'm not worried about, um, I'm not worried about trying to buy and if this was a stock or whatever it is, I know that this this trend is down. Sometimes it's gonna fight that and try and work on reversing it, but ultimately in this case, it's just continued to the downside. So as we look at this on individual stocks, let's go into some of our stocks. And one of the ones that I uh, looked at this morning, FTI, which is golden oil. So now we've got a weakening trend here but we're still notice how we've got this swing low point this swing high point but we're still up above this trending zone okay this momentum zone the 236 location and we're not even close to touching that yet and oftentimes it'll bounce right off of that level and with the with the snap tool it will automatically connect to that price point that swing high so if i were to take this chart and i were to just kind of you know if we were to pull this in and i were to keep connecting these high points. Let's just say that this is, well, let's go back another day or two. So let's say this is where we're at on FTI. It's automatically going to connect to the highest and lowest points on the chart. So my low point automatically, my high point automatically. As the trend is developing and I move this direction, it's now connecting to the highest point on the chart, which is here. This now is going to adjust this zone. It's gonna move it higher slightly, okay? Now, now, it's bumped up, it's connected to this new high, now it's trailing or moving that 236 line even higher. Okay, now I got another rally, see where this started. See now where this is at here, it was down here when it was connected to these high points. So it allows us to see the momentum as it's continuing inside of this upper range. It's continuing to move higher, it's continuing to advance. As long as that is working, then that is trending. Okay, now you get a couple of days of pullback. Now it's gonna stick to that high point. And now we're watching for this line to see if we get support around this location or if we end up getting a break of that location. So we get another rally, a couple of days right here, it's pulling back, pulling back, never quite gets there and then continues that overall advancement. Okay, now we've, we've rallied in one, all in one day, we're retesting that area. Let's give it another day, bounces back up. See how it's holding that 236. So when I pull up my chart in the morning and I look at it and I've got this snap tool, I can look to see is my stock inside of this upper range. If, and ideally it's still gonna be inside of a, it's still gonna have a, a inside the buy zone. Um, but if it's retracing and coming back, if we continue to move here, you can see moving, moving, and this is where this is where we're at as of today. So we're still up inside of this trending move on this stock, but the market is weak, and so stocks are going to be retracing and be a little bit weak here as well. This is, you know, oil has been moving, so it's interesting that this one hasn't moved as of yet. It has a decent fundamental profile, at least with EPS. At least they're green. Doesn't necessarily mean it's been. Um, mo moving high with uh, with conviction, but it is at the top end of this range. Typically will consolidate, but if it's going to maintain that strength of trend, it's going to stay in this upper level. Okay, so as we're going through different buy stocks, that's one uh, can, that can be one of the additional filters that you're using to say, okay, there's a new buy stock. I'm going to go through and look. Here's bees or home. I'm not surprised. So when we start to see some of these high flyers that are high strength stocks moving higher, it's pulling back to this level. This stock has had a huge run up. Then when the market starts to weaken, it's going to pull down some of these winners as well. That's why we want to be cautious right here on adding new positions or really adding no new positions and just managing our existing positions that we have and watching to see where the market ends up. Because we've also got SPY, if we look at the market from the same perspective, we've now got SPY, which is moving down here. Okay, it's, it's now getting pretty aggressive to the downside. We're breaking through this level. Okay, and our next real stop is probably gonna be right here. You can see we've touched it here, we've touched it here, and that's gonna be that 382. So if we break through this, we may go another day. If we get an update, we'll try and retest that and counter trend it. 
But chances are now, once we've broken through that and stay below it, we still have a few hours in the day, but if we stay below it, we're probably gonna retest that 382 zone. So as we, as we drop back out of each of these zones, we drop out of this momentum zone, and we're dropping, now we're dropping back into the retracement correction zone between 382 and 50%, really all the way down to the 618. But then it's going to work against us. It's going to be harder for the market to work back up. So there's very good chance that this current trend is starting to fail and accelerate. Uh, that 382, though, is a common retracement zone. And as I mentioned before, we could retrace all the way back to uh, that a common buy zone or even back here to this 50618. Uh, if the mark, if there's additional catalysts and there are additional reasons why the market thinks it needs to be moving lower, then it will do that. But interest interest rates rising and uh, the inverted yield curve slowdown in China, potentially additional slowdown in U the U.S. Uh, these are these are these are the locations to start to be aware of hedging uh, into bearish type positions. You, whether you're utilizing inverse ETFs like uh like spxs if we take a look at that sp i think that's the symbol spsx uh, it's not the symbol i had some in there let me just double check and grab these out of my other charts here we've got um where do they go where do they go sp SP, oh, SPXS, it was XP, I just typed it in wrong, XPSX. SPX, there we go. So now, now it's working this other direction. So these are inverse ETFs where we have, when the S&P 500 is dropping, then SPXS is moving higher. It's inverse by 3X. Okay, so as the S&P goes down by 1%, this actually goes up by 3%. So you can see that's starting to move. It, it still is inside of that range though, in this case. So we may, it, we may get another move back down, retest those, new, those highs. This would be retesting the highs on S&P 500 and then some support. And then if we see more downside, these are some of the, these are some of the easy ways to create some hedging in a portfolio. Uh, versus just selling what you've got, or you know, you can certainly add what are called protective put options. So if you own shares of the stock, you can buy put options against that. If the if you don't want to sell the stock, if you think it might be dropping, or again, just hedging what you've got by adding us adding some additional inverse ETFs to the portfolio. This is one of those. There's a bunch of them. There's uh, having to do with S and P or uh, the, the Qs, the Dow, multiple things for inverse ETFs. In fact, you can go to the Muscle ETF tab and scan, scan through that and say, what's moving? The new buys, what's interesting here, so this is 3X banks, okay? So this is 3X inverse banks, I should say. So banks are dropping, okay? Which means the inverse of that is rising. So if you're, if you're worried about banks and you wanna be able to hedge against banks dropping off the table, then this is a way to do that. BNKD, which is a hedge for any banking calamity. Again, if we go, let's see if we can show that chart from one year. That that might have been it right here. Uh, yeah, it was. So back in March, when we really had this banking crisis, you can see we went from eight to sixteen. It basically doubled, a hundred percent gain, because it's leveraged. It's triple ET. It's triple the opposite. We rallied back up. Now we're getting some fear back again in banks. And uh, then, so using ETFs, inverse ETFs, and this is also gonna kind of say which which sectors are, are starting to fail. This is interesting that we have ultra short China. Okay, so China, there's some risk in China, some worry about China. Let's go into a shorter time frame. And so the China market's been selling off, which means this has been rallying. So again, inverse ETFs, they've created so many different financial uh, instruments to be able to, to, uh, to double, triple returns without having margin, to also have to hedge positions going the opposite direction. Uh, there's, some, there's some really nice instruments to be able to do that. These are just, these are, these are not long-term instruments either. These need to be used for, in my opinion, hedging. You're not gonna wanna hold this for very long because there's a capped upside, right? 
if, if a bank, if all banks drop to zero, then this thing is going to go through the roof, but they're not, they're not going to drop that low. So there's a capped upside. And a lot of times when they're adjusting, they mark them to market each day. So sometimes these are not matching quite exactly. They're just, they're, they're trading, they're trading instruments. They're not long-term investment type of instruments. I'm talking about months, you know, you could hold it for several months and be just fine. And that would, and it would do its job. It would, it would take advantage of opportunity for, um, potential risk to any type of downside. So being aware of inverse ETFs to be able to hedge. And let's see what the strongest ones are currently. Uh, this one here, sometimes these interest rate ones look a little bit funky, but this is um, simplify interest rate hedge. So it's based on interest rates. I don't know any anything more than that. I'd have to do a little homework, but it's it's as in, it's it's linked to interest rates rising well we just looked at tlt we looked at tlt which is the 20 year bonds as it's dropping and we go back to that other chart and it's rising so you can see interest rates away it's essentially a way to buy interest rates uh and the, this month this last month it's up 30 percent so there's again there's lots of fancy cool stuff that ETFs provide that you then you could be like, oh man, I had no idea I could actually buy interest rates or a or a fund, an ETF against uh, interest rates, and you can probably even buy calls and puts on these as well. So some some ideas are for you regarding hedging, real estate hedging. So look at the leaders right here. We have interest rates, rising interest rates. We have real estate and a, a bearish 3x, which means that real estate, um, the real estate ETF is dropping significantly, which means this is rising. So we have, and that would make sense, right? If interest rates are going higher, real estate's gonna be dropping. And then we also have an ultra short 20 year treasury ETF that's also a leader. So as, it, as, as, as TLT is dropping, this is the off, opposite of that. It's inverse to that, which has been rallying. So uh, add some of these into your arsenal in terms of, you know, ways to play bigger ideas. That's kind of what they're for. They're, they're ways to play full sectors. They're ways to play the entire market. They're ways to play the bond market, the interest rate market, the real estate market, without having to focus either on futures or options or individual stocks. It's a way, it's a way to just really be diversified in the entire, in the entire idea. So they're, 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 they're great. They're great for, for por portfolio management because you want to have some of these things, particularly if we're moving and rolling into a bear market. But these also can tell us a little bit of a story. When we take a look at and we see on this muscles ETF, the ETF tab, and it's like, what are the top, you know, a lot of, a lot of these are different companies. So we see the same things, but just from, from a different company, like, you know, Direction or ProShare or iShare, there's several different big name ETF companies. And, but that top is telling us interest rates, real estate, bond market, Turkey, <laughs> for whatever reason, and then uh, consumer goods, rallying oil. So this is actually bullish oil. So 3X to the upside. Notice that these are negative 3X and these are positive 3X. So when we look at that and we say, all right, let's look at oil. If I want to go long oil uh, using and this is uh, this ETF here. And let's see if it can be a trend momentum type trade for us as well. Okay, it's up in that upper range. Watch to see how it finds some support, see if it continues to the upside. That can help tell that story. Okay, oil's working, let's focus on oil. Interest rates moving higher are, are working, let's focus on interest rates. Real estate is dropping, let's be aware of that. Let, let's, let's see if we can piece some of the stories together and help us in determining what our what our perspective is of the market this tells a decent story just with those top three interest rates are rising bonds are dropping real estate is tanking um and oil as well and utility utilities have been an interesting thing lately but oil right there to the upside consumer goods really everything's dropping um biotech negative biotech that's been dropping pretty hard here as well we're, we're definitely seeing a shift in the market. Uh, it's a pretty significant one, at least in the shorter term. We'll see if it accelerates. This is what an early stages feel like. And these are why we want to start positioning based on what's happening now versus what's happening 
three or four months from now when everything is has bottomed out. Okay, so in this case, in terms of bearish strategies and being aware of re least retracement, and that is, we, we also have to be aware this is a really strong bull market to the upside, but we want to, so we want to honor the retracement first and then the bearish strategy as that starts to un to unravel. What, what that's going to mean and what that's going to look like is let's let's say, okay, SPY, we go here, we leave our levels, we drop, let's say we drop all the way to the 382 and then we retrace back up and this becomes our resistance. This is now going to be a setup for us to be watching for more downside. Okay, so these the, this first move down becomes the clue the counter trend back up becomes a sucker's rally and we can exit long positions or set up additional bearish positions. But even this alone, after a long run up uh, and with some of those indicators, the way they're set up right now, uh, I still I still am going to hold fast to that to that uh, inverted yield curve that we're going to have a recession and markets um, and markets are going to struggle. Uh, we'll see. You know, at least based on the current data, that can always change. But that that typically, you know, for for years and years and years, a half a decade has come to pass. And we as human beings like to think, oh, it's going to be different this time. It's going to be different this time. It's going to be different this time. It sometimes it's going to be worse. It could be worse this time. Um, but it's never as good as it seems. It's never as bad as it seems. To be stuck in the middle right there, uh, don't get overly don't get overly married to, to one idea or the other. Um, although if you're very committed to an idea, you can make some money on being committed to that idea with some, with some risk management, of course. So we're, we're, we're breaking these things down. I think that this is a good sign of what's happening. The other sign of what's happening that I want to bring to your attention is under the sectors ETF. So sectors ETF, you're going to have, uh, typically, you, we're seeing a lot of green, and we're having. Now we've got almost every sector: materials, services, industries, real estate. Everything is selling, and everything else is in a hold range, working its way that direction to the downside. Except for energy, uh, energy has been moving pretty decent to the upside. That's the, you know, that that's the story. That's the story: is that we've got energy, healthcare, financials. Have also been moving to the upside with some retracement, but really there's nothing that's working other than energy, and that's and that and that's one of the stories we just want to be paying attention to right now because that's what's happening right now. And managing our portfolio, we don't want to be deer in the headlights and just be watching and being like, oh well, okay, what should I do? Well, things that you need to be doing are managing risk in terms of do I have how many equity? What's my percentage of inequities right now? Is it 90% and I've got a ton of holdings and they're starting to fail or you know it may that needs to be whittled back some depending on your risk tolerance and your ability to handle volatility if it's 50% or 30% right now it's it in my opinion it sh should start to be down towards that uh, less than 50% at least a okay, 50% in cash and starting to raise cash levels remember and I believe we talked about this last last time as well there's nothing wrong with cash especially right now because even though yes inflation is high and you might say inflation is 5% and you're earning 5% in your bank account or your CD it's better that because it's liquid and it's safe and those are there's a, and that's and that's what it's designed to do it's not designed to earn a ton of money it's designed to be to do nothing and be safe and allow you the liquidity to move it wherever you need to when you feel like there's opportunities that are made available to you right there a um, couple of other ideas that i wanted to focus on so really just in summary to kind of focus on market conditions the um the, there's really a couple stories that are that are being told. One is we are retracing. Two is it could just be a retracement, but these early retracements, if it happens a lot quicker, if we continue to see acceleration today and in the next couple days, then I think SPY, we're going to come back to, um, oops, let's go SPY. SPY. We're going to test this. Uh, if we get some sharp selling, that can certainly happen. The the selling we ha we just haven't seen really, you know, the the degree of aggressive selling 
me refresh that that we that we had back here that we had that we'd had back here in this move where we were getting just really sharp down days Let's see if i can even move that in just a little bit more okay so days that look like this a sell off really big days to the downside here and here and here that was an aggressive downturn okay and if we start to look if i move this this direction and we had here this retracement and things really got ugly down towards the bottom of that we just haven't seen that volatility Let's see there's there's more there's more now we're working on the uptrend we're coming back up the other direction still haven't shifted trend see how this on this time frame is still a downtrend it'll shift here soon there it goes okay so now we've shifted to the uptrend 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 <clears throat> retracement and now this is where we're at okay so sometimes that's kind of a fun progression as we're walking through the markets to see okay here's here's what happened here's where we're at and here's how things were moving higher and now this is where we're sitting at right here but we haven't seen those big those big red days like we saw back here like we saw last year they may be coming we'll, we'll see how today unfolds but uh, nothing too extreme at this point short-term bearish um, long-term still a little bit bullish that's the trend i'm saying because now we're in this uptrend and we've got to start watching for these to be support areas but if we close through this level and stay there there's a very good chance that we're going to slide continue to slide back down that actually shifted over to this swing low if i refresh that uh let me get rid of that pointer if i just refresh that and go to a, a six month time frame then that's where we're at now. That's kind of what I like to do is just stick with the pure time frames, and then ideally, I, I just really like that six month time frame. You can go out to the one and two year. It's going to change that trend and that location slightly, but in this case, our shorter term perspective, uh, and I think six months is you know it's kind of a shorter term perspective. Then we're looking at um, continued downside at these levels, unless we see a really hard big snap you know something sharp to the upside but it just doesn't feel like that we're seeing we're starting to feel that acceleration some selling and we're seeing it in a lot of stocks when we start to see it in these muscle stocks then we know that uh we know that something is starting to happen because everything gets thrown out the baby and the bathwater when markets reverse every even if it's good this has had a big uptrend it, but if it continues to break down that uptrend may be over maybe they're you know real estate how these housing stocks shouldn't be doing this well and maybe the market's going to start to realize like oh my gosh interest rates are high nobody's buying houses why the heck are we building houses uh, and maybe these stocks are really going to collapse we'll obviously keep an eye on that this is why you can utilize a stop loss at this location or even a little bit wider stop depending on your uh, your variability for volatility and depending on the individual stocks that you're owning let's see if there's anything else i wanted to go over i think i'm going to end on that note um and just be aware of market conditions watch for that acceleration to the downside utilize etfs as additional hedge as additional hedges and as as well as the story the story that's being told in these in these different markets right now or that the and these are strong these are the leading things that are going on interest rates real estate to the downside bonds to the downside oil to the upside here those are those are kind of the takeaways from today i'm gonna end on that note thanks everyone for your time and effort and we'll see you next time bye now